Welcome to KHW News at 5. I'm Kristen Severance in tonight for Laurel. Clackamas County is now the latest county to get approval to enter phase one of the governor's reopening plan starting tomorrow. Phase one means restaurants and bars can reopen at half capacity. Salons and barbershops can start up again too, along with gyms and fitness centers. Malls and shopping centers can also open up and gatherings of 25 people or less are OK as long as they're social distancing. So that leaves only Washington and Multnomah County left to enter phase one. Washington County is submitting its plan today. They expect to be ready to open by mid June. Now Multnomah County leaders, they aren't giving a date yet for when they even plan to apply. Now health officials are watching to see if there's an uptick in cases. Marion and Polk counties began opening up today and Deschutes County is already concerned about what it's seen during the first week of reopening. Pat Doris has the story. After nine long weeks of a forced closure except for takeout, the Covered Bridge Cafe in Staten is back and open for business. Today's our first day and I mean literally the coffee pots didn't want to work. They're they said, we, we haven't been on in nine weeks. Now you want us to make coffee. <laughs> so normal restaurant hiccups for sure. That's Carrie Sessoms, the yeah. owner. I talked with her a week and a half ago when she was still restricted in Marion County. But even then, work was underway to prepare for this day. And now it's here. She showed us around. So here's a little scan of the dining room. All of our tables, social distance. And this is the sanitation area. So all of our table service, coffees, um, our sugars, ketchup, salt and peppers, um, and menus get disinfected in between each customer. And there's Brenda. Brenda is our social distance person. Carrie is one of many small business owners who wondered how they would survive under COVID-19 restrictions. But now she is feeling a bit of hope. What's this like uh, emotionally for you? Big relief? It's a huge relief. We are so grateful to our community. They have stood by us and um, they're standing by us today. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our senators, Fred Gerard's in the dining room uh, with his lovely wife having breakfast. Uh, people are so uh, delighted to be able to sit down and enjoy a meal and visit with each other. In Deschutes County, the feeling is more like concern. After 26 new COVID-19 cases in just the last week since the county opened, an increase of 24% overall and a jump of 46% in people 29 years old and younger who are infected. Pictures from last weekend showed lots of folks gathered for food and other attractions. What we're seeing now in some of our cases is more out of the household interactions. So people are interacting with multiple different households or community members, which indicates to us that there's more potential for spread of COVID-19. Morgan Emerson is with Deschutes County Health Services. She said the county is spreading the warning, keep your distance. As we head into the weekend, we are asking our community and our businesses to follow the safety practices set out in the guidelines and to make safe choices this weekend don't have large multi-household gatherings. Save those for next year. I followed up with Deschutes County. They do not think the increase recently is from entering phase one. They think those people were probably infected before that, but they are worried about the big gatherings of people in houses and other places. They say if that continues, then there's a significant chance the infection rate could keep going up. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Makes sense. Thanks, Pat. You know, when businesses reopen, they'll have to put a lot of safety measures in place. So what will it look like when the tallest building in Portland with dozens of different companies working inside gets back up and running? Well, Steve Redland takes a look. <laughs> I'm going to like absolutely fail at doing this. So when things were pre pandemic, you would have a, a, a very bustling, really small city here in the in the building and so uh, there's clearly a lot of interested parties who want to get back to work and and are wondering what that's going to be like and what that's going to feel like and so it's our job right now to clearly communicate that to them and say here's the here are the steps we've taken and here how the, here's how this affects you because it does affect everybody and everybody's going to have to kind of work together and have a nice day to do things a little bit differently than we were used to doing it before my name is Brian Pierce. I run our real estate services group, which is all of our property managers, construction managers, and leasing teams. 
So this is the entry side. Come down the driveway, pull your car up here. The camera will read your license plate, raise the gate, and let you in. So you're not touching an access card, you're not pulling anything out, you're not wiping anything on the access reader, and you're driving through. We're in the business of providing workplaces, and right now we're in the business of providing safe workplaces. My name is Karen Eichen, I'm the Director of Real Estate Services for Unico Properties in Portland. HID app on my phone, which functions exactly the same as a traditional access card would function. The signage on the floor, the elevators are set so that they'll only accept four people as long as four people interact with a button. We've always had a significant presence of day cleaning in the building, and now they're focusing on wiping down and sanitizing high touch points. So that's elevator buttons, door handles, uh, anything that someone would put their hands on our security desk counter. This is our biggest individual building in the entire portfolio, but the portfolio is 75 buildings in, in six major markets across the country. Four of those markets have actually already uh, reopened, uh, so are much farther along in the process. When the stay home order came out, we were quick to pull all soft seating and tables. We're working with tenants, helping them, connecting them with consultants, various consultants, whether it's architects or hygienists, to, to figure out what's the best way for them to occupy their space, both in this kind of interim period uh, until hopefully there's a vaccine, and we hope that's a very short period of time, and then uh, the kind of post-pandemic world and whatever that new normal is going to be. If people want to come back and they want to occupy their offices, that they can do so safely and that everything that is under our control is absolutely as safe as possible and kind of following the guidelines that are, that are set up by the experts. You know, with the elevators limited to just four riders, there will be a staircase that workers can use, but since the tower is 42 floors, patience at the elevator may be your best option. So OSU is expanding its Trace COVID-19 testing project to the city of Bend. Tracers will do random door-to-door -door sampling in 30 neighborhoods May 30th and 31st. People who choose to participate will get a kit with a nasal swab so they can test themselves. And tracers will collect the kits right away. This testing program started in Corvallis and it was the first of its kind in the country. The idea is to find out how prevalent COVID-19 is, is in communities. So so it can be better managed. So normally at this point, us parents, we have a solid idea of what our kids are doing this summer, but not this year when so much is still up in the air. So state guidelines for child cares have loosened a little since the pandemic started and some providers plan to welcome a limited number of kids for the summer. They're not the only ones pivoting. Like many organizations, Boy Scouts of America's Cascade Pacific Council canceled their summer camps. Now they're brainstorming how to physically distant, you know, some of their programs. The way things are, are looking, it very much feels like that family-based activities will be the nuts and bolts of our outdoor experience. And so we're working with the state right now to, to reorganize our camps to be more like parks and to be able to offer programs for families where we can keep them socially distant but also provide activities for them. So some overnight programs like Camp Nominu that depend on overnight camping are holding out and they hope the state will let overnight camps reopen later this summer. Without it, of course, they would continue to take a huge financial hit. We have an election update. Shamia Fagan has won the tight race for the Democratic nomination for Secretary of State. Mark Haas conceded days after he initially declared he was initially declared the winner. He congratulated Fagan and wrote in a statement in part in this terrible pandemic, losing a political contest doesn't rank too high as a serious problem. So I'm taking this in stride. Grateful to all who engaged in our democratic process. Grateful for my blessings and with my best best wishes to all Oregonians.